right, so y'all go ahead and do the factoring and the math knowledge question. Pause the video, and then once everyone is finished, you can unpause the video, and we'll go over the correct answers. So for this one, this is a factoring by grouping. What you're going to want to do is factor these two terms, and then you're going to want to factor these two terms. So these first two terms only have an M in common, and if you pull that out, you have Z minus 5H squared left. Okay? Now these next terms, we want to factor out this negative, and they also have a 5N in common. And so if you pull out a negative 5N, you're going to have Z minus 5H squared. The reason we wanted to factor out a negative was so that these pieces in our parentheses were the exact same thing. <clears throat> so if we have the exact same thing in our parentheses, z minus 5, h squared, what we can do is say m and then minus the 5n. And so that is how this would factor. That's called factoring by grouping. We may not have gone over that before, but we'll do some more of them throughout the year so that you'll get a little bit better with those. Okay, so for the math knowledge question, the geometric sequence, this times some number gives you that, times some number gives you that, times the number gives you that, times it gives you 96. The number that you're going to want to multiply is a negative 4. And so 0.375 times negative 4 is negative 1.5, times negative 4 is 6, times negative 4 is negative 24, times negative 4 is 96. So negative 4 times 96 gives you negative 384. So that would be the sixth term that you would have. So we are looking at lesson 90 today. We did skip lesson 89 because we actually did that back with lesson 71 um, towards the beginning of the, back in the beginning of January. So we already covered lesson 89, so we're skipping over to lesson 90. Dealing with double angle identities and half angle identities. So hopefully you'll understand your double and half angle identities after this lesson. We want to develop the identities for the sine of 2a and the cosine of 2a. Now, these are actually not really long developments. The sine of 2a is the same thing as the sine of a plus a. And so we are going to use this sine of a plus b, which you were supposed to memorize, which is the sine of a times the cosine of b plus the cosine of a times the sine of a will be. And so now we can say that the sine of a plus a is the sine of a times the cosine of a plus the cosine of a times the sine of a. Because our a's get replaced, I mean our b's get replaced with a's. So this would be 2 sine of a times the cosine of a. And so that is your development for the sine of 2a. And so you definitely want to memorize that the sine of 2a equals 2 sine of a cosine of a. Now for the cosine of 2a. We again can write that as the cosine of a plus a. And so we're going to use the cosine of a plus b which is cosine of a, cosine of b, minus the sine of a, sine of b. And then we can replace it where we have a plus a. So we have the cosine of a, cosine of a, minus the sine of a, sine of a. And then the cosine of a, cosine of a is cosine squared a. And then sine a, sine a is sine squared a. And so the cosine of 2a is actually equal to this. And that's your development there, those four steps right there. Now, there are two other ways that you can write the cosine of 2a, and I'm going to show you those because sometimes you may want to use them. The cosine squared of a, remember sine squared of a plus cosine squared of a equals 1. Cosine squared of a is 1 minus sine squared of a. And so instead of cosine squared of a, we can say 1 minus sine squared of a, and then minus sine squared of a, which is just 1 minus 2 sine squared of a. And so that would be 
another way that you could write the cosine of 2a. Sometimes they'll use that one, so you may want to mark it just like you've been doing with your other trig identities. Now, we can also say that sine squared of a is 1 minus cosine squared of a. And so instead of replacing the cosine squared of a, we can say sine squared of a is 1 minus cosine squared of a. And so that's going to be a negative 1 and a positive cosine if we distribute our negative. And so we would have 2 cosine squared of a minus 1. And so those are the three different ways that you can actually write the cosine of 2a. So again, you may want to write all three of those down, not just that top one. The top one you definitely want to memorize, and then the other two would be very helpful if you knew those as well. Okay, so we're going to begin with the identities for sine of a plus b and cosine of a plus b, and we want to develop the identity for tangent of 2a. So on this, the tangent of 2a is the same thing as the sine of 2a over the cosine of 2a. And so we know that the sine of 2a, because we just developed it, is 2 sine of a cosine of b. And we know that the cosine of 2a is cosine squared of a minus sine squared of a. This should be an a here. 2 sine of a cosine of a and then cosine squared a minus sine squared a. Now remember, when we're dealing with tangents, we want the first term in our denominator to be a 1. So we want that value there to be a 1. So the way that we make it a 1 is to divide it by itself. So we're going to divide everything by cosine squared of a. So we have 2 sine of a cosine of a divided by cosine squared of a. And so the numerator, one set of cosines will be canceled, and sine over cosine is tangent. So we have 2 tangent of a, and then 1 minus the tangent squared of a. And so that would be the development, but this is what tangent of 2a equals. So you definitely want to highlight that. Um, but those are your three double angle identities. Now we're going to look at half angle identities. You will not need to develop the half angle identities. You just need to memorize them. So on your homework, if it says to develop it, I have let you omit them. But you will have to actually use them. Okay? So this is for the sine of x over 2. It equals plus or minus the square root of 1 minus cosine over 2. And then the cosine of x over 2 plus or minus 1 plus cosine over 2. So the only difference here, 1 is a negative and 1 is a positive. Everything else is the exact same, okay? So you don't have to develop those on your homework or on the test. You'll only have to plug them in and simplify them. So hopefully um, that'll save you a little bit of time on not having to develop those. You do get to omit number 14 and 15 on your homework, so make sure you do everything else so that we can go over your homework tomorrow with any questions that you have.